Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 11th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. This weekend, Didier wrote a diary about analyzing JPEGs. Now, JPEGs are typically not at the top of the list when it comes to suspicious and malicious file formats, but certainly JPEGs can be used in order to trigger arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities. So they certainly do sometimes deserve some attention. And Didier is going over how to analyze the JPEG structure and how to look for any suspicious content. In this particular case, he's examining a JPEG that was created created using Metasploit. Now, if you're looking for a simple way to audit common security issues on Windows systems, Rust has a nice tool for you, Winspec. And now, Winspec is a PowerShell script. It does produce an easy to read, fairly concise report that uh, does summarize a lot of the important security settings, patch level, and uh, other related items. It's still under active development and the developer does look for feedback on the tool. They already are discussing some additional extensions they're going to put at it. So I find this is probably something that you should consider in particular if you're trying to run scripts like this at scale. And endpoint security company Ensilo found an interesting vulnerability or bug in Windows. Now, a lot of anti-malware software needs to be notified whenever a new piece of software is started. And in order to accomplish this, Windows has a system call PS set load image notify routine. Now, this particular callback is triggered whenever there is a new driver or a new process loaded in memory and anti-malware can register for this and then receive data about the process, which includes the path of the respective file. And that of course can then be used to verify whether or not this particular file is malicious. The problem here is that the path, the file name being passed may actually be invalid. And this is something that Ensilo ran into. Now, uh, they're doing here a reasonable good job in actually trying to figure out the root cause of this problem haven't really quite solved it yet. They're promising a second uh, blog post here that uh, will actually or at least promising to tell us about a workaround for uh, this particular bug. But in itself, of course, uh, this could be used by malware in order to bypass some anti-malware scanners by, for example, feeding the anti-malware scanner a benign file name instead of the actual file name that was loaded. As an end user, there isn't really much you can do. Microsoft in its initial response stated that they do not consider this a security vulnerability and as a result will not immediately fix it. Maybe it will be fixed uh, later on. Uh, this is really something that anti-malware software has to take into account when they are using uh, this particular system call. We'll see what kind of workaround Ensilo is proposing, whether that's something that's realistic to be used uh, by anti-malware. Over the last year or so, the cryptocurrency space has been heating up beyond Bitcoin. We have a number of new and in part significant cryptocurrencies emerging. One of them is IOTA. Now, IOTA itself apparently has a market cap of about 2 billion US dollars. Only problem here is that apparently the cryptography behind IOTA isn't really all that solid. A lot of times, in the rush of rolling out these new cryptocurrencies, some of these important details are overlooked. In the case of IOTA, they try to roll their own hashing function. Now, just like rolling your own crypto is usually unadvisable, rolling your own cryptographic hash function isn't any better. In this particular case, they developed their own hash function they call 
Kurlovich, according to some research released last week, has very trivial collisions. So what this means is that someone could come up with two different payments and both of them will have the same hash, making them indistinguishable and making it possible to transfer a signature from one payment to another. The IOTA developers have taken steps to fix this problem. They now moved to SHA-3, which is the latest and greatest validated hash function. But then again, this overall indicates that probably some of the cryptographic choices within this particular cryptocurrency haven't really been vetted appropriately. So buy our beware before you are diving into any of these new currencies. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.